Welcome to Inside Imaginary Realism, an art show about visionary art and beyond. I'm Bonnie Hutt and we bring you this new mini-series. Each week we will be asking new and different questions of our artists living in Australia. We will be introducing art genres occasionally overlooked by the mainstream art world now regaining recognition. How do you go about starting a new piece of art? A new piece of art is always a process that's ongoing. So for me, I'm always thinking about new concepts. Um, I'm, I'm distilling that and I'm finding how, how am I going to bring that out into form. And so this dreaming process is continually happening. Um, when I go to begin a piece, I usually have quite a um, clear vision of what I want to create and then I will usually um, begin with um, a sketch and find, um, find a, a, a full rendering in that sketch and then I'll begin the process of painting. So for me it's usually layers of um, glazes and then building it up with egg tempera with the whites uh, so so painting with the light um, and layering upon layering so really working with a, a rendering uh, with light and form process well i'm pretty mathematical so like i'll look at the structure of things first i'll look at the movement i'll look at where the eye moves and then I'll start blocking in shapes and then once the shapes are in place then I'll actually start to go wow okay so this, that's the structure this is where things are this is how big these objects are then I'll look at that for a little while and it, it, it may take a couple of days and these are for the big pieces um, then I'll just start blocking them in with whatever I need but the narrative is always the, the concept the story behind it always comes first and then while I'm making it, then it's like the story grows as I do. It's like writing a book. Um, I've got an initial concept, then I put in my structure, and then from there I just let it go. And the more I let go, the, the less I tend to overthink things, then the better it ends up being. Sketch it very briefly on paper, and then I don't put pencil on the canvas at all, usually. I'll just do it all with the brush, um, backdrop it, and then just do it piece by piece by piece. Well, of course, with anything creative, the idea comes. And for me, I have the art piece probably 80% done in my head three-dimensionally before I put anything down and research. I do a lot of research because I do um, try to do a lot of historically accurate things in my work and I'm interested in that so I'll research fashion of the era that I'm interested in for this piece or something along those lines. Then uh, I have to clear my space energetically and make sure I've got the materials I need so I don't get halfway through and go ah, and get frustrated and have to run up to the shops and lose my inspiration. So having everything I need um, both in my head and physically. That's how I start. Mm. Starting a new piece of work uh, would definitely the, the first thing I have to do is make a mark on a canvas. Um, the most daunting thing is to see a blank canvas and to make that first mark, um, yeah, it's crucial and it can sometimes happen from a sort of a, almost a zen attack. Um, or it could be the opposite and be more of a, a gentle blend into it. But um, a basic idea, basic concept, um, I don't try to plan out too much. I, um, I like to see where it takes me within the painting. Yeah. I think the best, the best time that ever happened to me um, in inspiring me to paint was uh, one of the models sent me an email saying, when can we come and play again? <laughs> 
And, and uh, we, we got everybody together and had the most amazing photo shoot. Uh, and, and there's about four paintings that have come out of that one photo shoot. So I, I'm going to say my models, they're the inspiration. Yeah, they always are. I think what I do um, is I take photographs, lots of photographs. Um, I go through those photographs and pick out the best one. Um, my husband and brother help me with that um, because I'm not very good on the computer. And um, then I select the one and then I'll blow it up with my projector onto my, my canvas, uh, pencil it out, turn it all off, block it out, as in block in the big spaces on my canvas, and then it's all fun. Uh, that's when I fill in and that's how I get it up there. Sometimes I have a concept before I begin. Sometimes I, my concept isn't 100% defined, but I often start by doing a sketch. And then I sketch down a number of ideas onto paper. And then from that sketch, I start to transfer it onto my painting. It takes a long time, it's like a seed that sometimes germinates or sometimes bends in the wrong direction and I have no idea where it's going to go, so often there's an inkling of where it could be going, but how do I start? I don't know, it depends on each work. It's not that easy to say. Not just one spot, it's not like a game of bloody Monopoly. I go about starting a new piece of artwork by, first of all, relaxing, breathing, being grateful for my life. I, uh, I try to get myself calm and into a, a meditative sort of state so that I'm dropping into myself and then I'm, I'm ready to allow myself to work in service for a greater good. I do things like smudging. I clear my space and I clear myself by burning white sage or palo santo or tree saps that help to clear me and to uh, get me present and ready. Can you share something with us about your art creation process? Yeah, well, as, I, as I've said, I've, I, I go through photo shoots to, to get subject matter. And I'll go through that photo shoot. There might be anything up to 400 photos. Um, and I'll just pick out the one that aesthetically is pleasing me. Um, as for the background, I tend to um, create that afterwards. It, it, it's more of a mind game that I have later. I start painting the actual subject and then the background will almost create itself. I, I throw paint around, I push stuff around, I get ideas. Uh, it, it may take weeks and weeks to, to come up with the final idea. I've painted backgrounds in and out so many times. Uh, it's, it's just a process of waiting for the right idea to come through. Well, it, I think for, for me it um, changes, of course, each time, um, the direction. Um, practically, uh, I'll start with just mixing the oils together and, and just enjoying that, touching this amazing stuff, oil paint, and just getting in tune with the the type of canvas I've got, um, then the concept and then the music, always the music, uh, will sort of put me in that space and um, start to create. Uh, I tend to work on the whole canvas together. Um, I'll try to get the whole thing covered and moving together and just keep building until it's um, finished. And that finishing time is actually crucial. It's, uh, I've come to a point now after these years that that gut feeling tells you you've finished a painting. And that's, that's what I rely on now, is the gut feeling. I think for, for me, as it's a personal journey. And um, I think the, the process really comes into it as, this, as it develops. So te technique and is not as quite as important as what you'd think. The, a lot of people are attracted to the overall skill level of something, how well it's rendered. I think if you do anything enough, you get very good at it. But if it doesn't have the passion behind it, 
then it becomes pretty boring very quickly. My creation process requires um, me to constantly be collecting objects. What I do is I uh, go through lots of people's hard rubbish and I collect lots of different things that I then use to construct temporary um, sculptures out of. And these temporary sculptures exist only for me to photograph them. So it's sort of a mixed media process involving uh, sculpture and then photography. So my creating, my process of creating art is something that's always weaving through my life and I feel like when I have something to um, communicate through my art, I need to live it. So it's a real lived spiritual experience for me. It's like an initiation that I bring through in each painting. I think the three primary ingredients into my creative process would have to be perseverance, focus and patience. Without those three attributes, I would never ever get through the paintings that I do. And I didn't initially have these qualities. Um, they are qualities that I learned over time. I think I should just show you this work, because uh, that's the best way to show you where I'm starting from with one particular work, and lichens, you know, uh, some of them I'm really fascinated with, and at the moment I'm, I'm sort of spreading, and in a way, this work sort of em it's emblematic of where I often, how I often um, paint, because it sort of starts from a centre and just spreads out, and have all different centres, and they end up meeting, and I don't know what's going to happen often, you know, between the meeting places. The process of art creation for me is very much, um, as I said in the previous question, it's very much the happening in my head before it appears physically. So, you know, the drawing, painting, sculpting, whatever it is I'm doing with my hands is just basically discovering how to bring that picture in my head into reality. So. It feels sometimes to me when I'm painting that what the blank canvas is actually a veil and I'm just wiping the you know the white canvas away to discover the um, the beautiful artwork underneath so it feels like it's already existing to me do you create art even when you're not inspired no never never do what I do is I go away from it close the door in the studio uh, virtually just walk away, regroup, get my head together, come back and normally that helps because I see it with new eyes and it, it's always for the better but I never create when I'm not in, in that frame of mind. If I don't make art I feel sick. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I, if I don't make art I feel depressed, I, I don't feel happy. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but I think it, whether it's from habit or whether it's just from the fact that um, I, I just really need to feel like I'm doing something. And even if I'm sitting somewhere, my hands need to do something, so I'm always making something at all times. Um, some, sometimes I'll, I'll be really inspired and I'll have this really big piece that I'll work on for a really long period of time, but there's always two or three things that I'm working on at once. Um, in terms of inspiration, I think that um, I don't necessarily need to be inspired to make art. I think it helps, but um, if I don't make art, then I know that I suffer. No. I'm always inspired and I'm always creating art. I absolutely um, still create art when I am not feeling inspired because the irony of that is you've got to create the art then you will feel inspired or creating the art helps you to feel inspired even if at the beginning you don't feel inspired yes <laughs> i think um even when i'm not inspired i like to to start creating art and then eventually get in the flow so i would start um, making something even when i don't feel like it <laughs> I think it's inevitable that you're going to have moments of waxing and waning and or long periods and you just have to plough through it um, and do things which are prob probably, you know, vary, you vary things up.
so I don't like staying uninspired for a long period of time, but sometimes you just you have to be, you know, low energy so you can get to moments of higher energy. So it's just par for the course. It's normal. Yes. Uh, although I have developed a technique over the years to raise inspiration in me that may not naturally be there. And because I work a lot by commission, uh, I have deadlines and people want particular things and one subject that somebody wants may not be as inspiring as something I've chosen myself. But I always find something inspiring in it and I raise that in me like you might warm up to do exercise. Yes, absolutely. Um, with this sort of art making process, many times you are uh, guided to make the art as opposed to you making the personal decision. And with my process, it requires a lot of collection of things and categor categorization, structure and organization before I can actually do things. So I'm constantly on the lookout for actors, if you will, that I could use uh, in my process. I try not to actually enter the studio until I'm feeling uh, in the zone, but um, uh, sometimes you don't have that luxury. Where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, I get it from everywhere. Um, walk in the bush, I can look at a moment, I call them moments where the sun just hits a leaf or um, I could be sitting watching TV or I could be talking in a discussion. Um, things that hit me that I feel very deeply about, then I feel that I need to put on a canvas and that's where my inspiration comes from. My inspiration, it can be from anywhere and anything, but I guess it would have to be the energy of things around me. Something about a certain person, a certain animal, a certain scene, uh, a certain story catches me um, in my heart in some way and it, it really inspires me. It, I, I feel this energy building and this kind of desire to, to express that and explore it and it's like almost a craving like you want to you feel like eating chocolate and then you think about the chocolate and you know you're just like oh I really want that chocolate even though you're doing other things or when I get inspired with my art it's the same way but it's not consistent in terms of there's no particular subjects or anything anything can inspire me and I don't know what it's going to be until it hits me. It can be many different things often um, it'll come from a, a story or an experience that I've had uh, one of these experiences is uh, this piece here, um, I, I met a Papua New Guinean woman at an exhibition and she was explaining to me that when um, her culture used to collect these feathers called the bird of paradise feathers and her culture was very very bright and colourful but the birds started becoming more and more rare and as um, other cultures came and began introduced to her culture she saw the, the colours of her traditional feathers bleed out and they became less and less colourful until it was like their culture was being bleached and I, I, that almost brought me to tears so that's something that inspired me that, that moment, that story, that conversation that I had with her was enough to drive me to make a really detailed piece of artwork that's the kind of thing that happens so I'll, I'll hear a story or I'll read a book or something that I that changes the way that I think or creates a really big emotional response and I'll want to communicate that. From visions usually associated with my spiritual contemplations at any given point in my life. Uh, my inspiration really comes from all around me. I find nature is a beautiful um, inspiration. So all aspects of nature and human nature as well. Like a lot of artists, I would say that I get my inspiration from everyday things. You know, it's amazing even small objects lying around the house. Um, walking down the street, you see all sorts of things from a different perspective if you're an artist. Um, and also the words inspiration come from the words meaning in spirit. So 
which basically means when you are in connection with your own soul, um, you feel inspired. So, and how do you connect with your own soul? Well, the irony of that is through um, art, you know, whether it's music, dancing, writing, um, they are all forms of connecting with your own soul. Well, that's multiple sources usually. I don't think it's from one source or one place, but mainly at the moment it would be the natural world. I find that much more invigorating than the human built world. My inspiration, oddly enough, comes from my models. Um, I've got a number of models and they're so fantastic. They know what I want more than I know. I, I used to get them in and we'd do photo shoots and I'd tell them how to pose, um, how to, how I wanted it, the situation, the composition, everything. And then I realised slowly but surely that they were doing better work than I was. So I, uh, basically now they kick me out of my studio while they get into costume and then when they come back in they start posing and it just, it, it'll go on for an hour and the, the amazing things that they do, uh, I just feel extraordinarily lucky to have them and that's where it all comes from. I think uh, inspiration, uh, it's funny because I, I'm inspired all the time I suppose by different things. Um, it can be an emotion that someone puts across, it could be a snail walking down a, a driveway, it could be um, someone else's work, um, anything that, that will spark that imagination and sometimes just painting in the process of painting is when you can be inspired for the next painting and so on. Yeah. I get my inspiration from source, from source energy. I align myself with my ancestors and with my guides. I draw on the powers of sacred geometry. I draw on my experiences with entheogens, with plant teachers, plant medicines and all the tools therein. Um, I've been, been, been very influenced by surrealist artists and um, artists that have come before me and uh, these are my influences, this is where I draw, draw my inspiration from. We trust that you enjoyed this week's program. Inside Imaginary Realism was brought to you by Metro Television. Please see the Visionary Art Network Australia's website to see more art and artists visionaryart.net.au The Department of Communication intend to take community television off air Australia wide. Please go to Channel 31's website at c31.org.au and join the campaign to keep us on air. Yeah.